It's easy to get excited about new Obsidian plugins and the features that they enable. But with over 2,500 community plugins to choose from, it can be difficult to know which ones can really help and which ones are a waste of time. And as someone who lives in Obsidian all day, every day, I've tried more plugins than I care to admit. My vault currently has 39 plugins, but most of them are just nice to have plugins. My workflows wouldn't be disrupted too terribly much if those plugins went away. However, there are a handful of plugins that are absolutely essential for me. And these plugins are critical to the way that I work in Obsidian. I'm not sure what I'd do if I couldn't use these plugins anymore. So in this video, I'm gonna share the eight plugins that I absolutely cannot live without. If I were doing a tier ranking of Obsidian plugins, these plugins would be my S tier at the very top. While there are a lot of other very good plugins out there, these eight plugins are head and shoulders above everything else that's out there for me. Now, before we get to the plugins themselves and how I use them, I need to make a public service announcement here real quick about plugin hygiene. As a general rule, you wanna use as few Obsidian plugins as you can. Now, don't get me wrong, plugins are great. You can use them to extend the capabilities of Obsidian in some really interesting ways and really build your perfect notes app. That's the beautiful thing about Obsidian in my opinion. But when you have too many plugins, it can cause Obsidian to not only load slowly on launch, but it can also degrade the overall performance of the app quite a bit. Now the same can also be said about the number of notes in your vault. So you really need to find that sweet spot for yourself in terms of vault size and plugin configuration. And there is no single solution for this, regardless of what some people may say. The case can even be made for not using community plugins at all. But the way that I choose the plugins that I use is I consider how they fit into my PKM workflows and ultimately the apps that I've decided to use in my PKM stack. The PKM stack is a framework that I use to help me plug the right apps into the right places so that information can flow effortlessly into and then out of my PKM system. Now, if you want to dive deeper into that framework, I have a separate video here where I walk through the whole thing. But for now, just recognize it's worth considering what the plugins you install actually do for you and try to keep your Obsidian Vault as lean as possible. All right, so with that caveat out of the way, let's get into the plugins themselves and how I use them. We'll go in ascending order. So we end with the plugin that is most essential for me, and I'm guessing you might be surprised by what it is by the time we get there. So the first plugin I wanna mention here is the good old calendar plugin. Now this may be one of the simpler plugins on this list, but it's easy to underestimate just how useful this plugin is if you use the Daily Notes Core plugin in any way, shape, or form. I love this plugin. I actually think it should become a built-in Obsidian feature at some point. The thing about the calendar plugin is that it doesn't just give you a calendar view in your sidebar, it actually gives you a feature that I use all the time, and that is the ability to click on a date and create that day's daily note. So for example, I use a bunch of date tokens in my daily note template file, which looks something like this. And those tokens get replaced with the date of the daily note when that note is created. So in the daily note template file, it will look like double curly brackets, date colon, year, 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 dash, month, month, dash, day, day. But when you create a new daily note, it will be translated into something like 2025, dash, 08, dash, 31. And using the calendar plugin, you can actually jump to or create a note for whatever daily note you want just by clicking on it in the calendar view. If you go into the calendar plugin settings and toggle on the show week number option, the calendar will also show the week numbers, which you can click on to jump to your weekly note as well if you've got that configured using the next plugin on this list, which is the periodic notes plugin. This plugin basically gives you options for additional periodic notes like weekly notes, monthly notes, quarterly notes, even yearly notes. You can configure settings for these other time periods just like you can for the built-in daily notes, including the folder you wanna store these notes in, the formatting for the file name when it's created, and the template file that you want to use. This plugin is essential for the multi-scale planning workflow that I picked up from Cal Newport, where you align your quarterly, weekly, and daily plans. I walked through my whole system for this and how it all ties back to my quarterly personal retreat in this video here. So if you wanna dive deeper into the benefits of multi-scale planning, go check out that video. The important thing here is that this is all enabled by this Periodic Notes plugin, which is actually developed by Liam Kane, an Obsidian team member, and the same person behind the previously mentioned Calendar plugin. 
So since these two plugins are built by the same person, they go together like peanut butter and jelly. The next essential plugin on this list is the DataView plugin. Now I actually don't use DataView nearly as much as I used to, thanks to the new Basis Core plugin that's available in Obsidian version 1.9. But there are still a few indispensable ways that I rely on this plugin. The main way is the inline DataView JS or JavaScript, which is what powers my Memento Mori code in my daily note that I walked through in this YouTube video here. There is a successor to DataView called Data Core that is in development, but I think bases will be better for most use cases anyway. In fact, I plan on replacing most of my DataView queries with bases code blocks in the near future, but as long as this plugin enables that inline JavaScript query, I don't think I'll ever be able to fully remove my reliance on this one. The next plugin on this list is also the most recent for me, and that is the Keep the Rhythm plugin. If you're not using Obsidian for writing, you probably won't have much use for this one. But in my opinion, Obsidian is severely underrated as a writing app. And this plugin has had an incredible impact on the amount that I actually write. It basically gives you a heat map showing the number of words that you've written and it helps create the motivation that you need to show up and write consistently. This is important for me because writing is at the heart of everything that I do creatively. Doesn't matter if it's a video script like this one, a newsletter, or an article for my website, almost everything I create starts out as text in Obsidian. Even the topics that we talk about for my podcast begin life most of the time as text-based ideas. But even though I know how important writing is, I honestly still find myself occasionally getting to the end of the day and thinking I need to get some writing done so I don't ruin my stats and break the chain. Now, if you want to see this plugin in action, check out this YouTube video here where I walk through the whole thing. But if you could use a little help creating a consistent writing habit, what you need to know right now is that this is definitely a plugin that you should check out. The next plugin on the list is Templater. Think of this community plugin as templates plus plus. While you can get by with the built-in templates core plugin, if you really want to automate things in Obsidian, you're eventually going to need to upgrade to Templater, which gives you a bunch of additional features. Templator not only gives you additional template variables, but it also lets you do some pretty cool things like control the placement of the mouse cursor when you're creating files. But even if you decide not to get too crazy with template automation, this plugin can still be useful because it adds some essential features. One of the ones I use all the time is folder templates, which automatically apply certain templates when files are added in specific folders. I use Templator folder templates for my video scripts, articles that I write, newsletters, book notes, personal retreats, sermon notes, and more. I even have one that creates a new Kanban board following the five light bulbs marketing methodology from Billy Broaz that I use for product ideation. Bottom line, if you use templates at all, chances are you will dig Templator. The next plugin on the list is Quick Add. This plugin lets you create custom macros for automating things in Obsidian. And it may not look like much at first, but once you start figuring out how to tie these things together, this plugin quickly becomes essential for anyone who wants to control Obsidian from their keyboard. You can even use this to prompt for certain values when you create files from templates. So for example, I use Quick Add to capture journal entries, and then I append those entries to the appropriate section in my daily note. With Quick Add, I can use a keyboard hotkey from anywhere in my Obsidian vault to run a system command, answer a pop-up prompt, my response gets formatted and appended to the right section in my daily note. I also use Quick Add to power the macro that I mentioned in this video, where it creates the file in the appropriate folder for my creative writing projects with the correct template applied, and then creates the card and links to that note on the Kanban board at the same time. It's really cool and it saves a lot of time. The longer I use this plugin, the more uses I find for it. I now use Quick Add to capture different types of journal entries to my daily note, add tasks to my master task list from anywhere in Obsidian, and automate the creation of files, templates, and cards for my creative writing projects. I also use it when creating a new people note, as I talk about in this video here, where I provide the person's first name, last name, and tag, and the file gets created with the task queries appropriately formatted so that I can roll up tasks associated with that particular person into their note. I just need to consult the person's note, for example, before entering the meeting for a list of things that I need to discuss with them. The bottom line is that while I could figure out how to do most of this without Quick Add, this plugin removes a ton of friction for me and it makes things much easier 
making it an essential plugin for the way that I work in Obsidian. All right, we're getting down to the end here. The next plugin on the list may surprise you that it's not number one, and that is the Obsidian Task plugin. And that's not to take anything away from this incredible plugin, which is absolutely amazing. If you've been following my YouTube channel for any length of time, you know I use this one a lot. It powers not just my task and project management, but also the people note that I just mentioned, as well as my daily chronological Bible reading plan that's on my daily note that I walk through in this video. But the main reason I rely on this plugin is that I use it every day for my personal task and project management needs. It took me a long time to figure out task management in Obsidian, but there is no going back now, and I could not do it without the Obsidian Task plugin, which powers my entire workflow and my task dashboard that I walk through in this YouTube video here. Now there's a lot to that workflow, so if you wanna understand more about plain text task management and the trade-offs that are associated with it, definitely check out that other video, but the task plugin does give you just about anything you could possibly want from a dedicated task manager. It even has an API which lets you add tasks from anywhere using the aforementioned Quick Add plugin. And it also integrates with Morgan, my favorite calendaring app, for time blocking the things that you need to do. Again, I've got another YouTube video here if you wanna see how those two apps integrate and how it can help you time block your tasks so you make sure that you get the most important things done. All right, we're down to the end, my most essential Obsidian plugin. Now, honestly, it's hard to pick just one, but if I had to, the plugin I absolutely could not live without is Actions URI by Carlo Zotman. Now, this may seem like a weird one to put at the top of the list. I get that, but this plugin is absolutely critical for me. The most important workflow I have is my digital journaling workflow, where I log my daily questions to my daily note. Now, and that workflow is completely dependent on the shortcuts actions added via the Actions for Obsidian app on iOS. The bridge that allows those actions to write to the appropriate periodic note in Obsidian is this plugin, which means that I would probably just give up trying to journal in Obsidian if this plugin ever went away. Now, if you wanna see that daily questions workflow and how it's configured, check out this video here. But basically, I've got a shortcut that allows me to capture my ratings for my daily questions which looks something like, did I do my best to love my kids, love my wife, create something, etc., on a scale from one to 10. So I assign a score based on my effort or my intentions, and then it formats those responses and adds the scores to the appropriate tags. And then finally inserts that whole text block at a specific placeholder in the current daily note file. I've even got a custom canvas dashboard where I display those values on a line graph that I review every time I do a quarterly personal retreat. Now, if you want to see this in action, again, definitely check out that other video. But just to reiterate, the Actions URI plugin is the thing that holds all this together. It's the duct tape with which this workflow would not work. Without Actions URI, this workflow would be completely broken. All right, so there you have it. Those are my eight essential Obsidian plugins. You might have a different list, but these are the ones that I cannot live without. Now, I've provided links to all these plugins and the videos that I mentioned for the workflow walkthroughs in the description below this video so you can try them out and see which ones might be worth adding to your own Obsidian Vault. And if you do want a pre-built version of any of these workflows, I've got an epic done for you Obsidian Vault that I call Life HQ, which has all the plugins pre-installed and all the settings pre-configured. You can find out more about that at lifehq.practicalpkm.com. And if you want more free Obsidian tips and resources, then download my free Practical PKM Obsidian Starter Vault. It includes a bunch of Obsidian resources to help you organize, create, and optimize your notes like a pro. You can download the Starter Vault for free by going to vault.practicalpkm.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in another video.